Oh. Oh, we're recording. Oh, hello, guys. Um, really sorry. Gareth Southgate sent me to sleep. Um, I hope all of you are well. <laughs> that was absolutely dreadful. What did we just watch? What did we just witness here, man? England, Brazil. <clears throat> what a calamity. I mean, first and foremost, can we just say, like I've just um, acknowledged right there, I think that was just absolutely dreadful um, in terms of just watching a football match. That was just dead. But at the same time, um, I'm going to give you my two cents on this game and, and the repercussions of this. Before the kickoff, I looked at that Brazil team and I'm thinking, this is Brazil? Like, this is now what Brazil have to offer. This is Brazil. Brazil, the only names you can really take out of that Brazil team that you look at and go and you feel Brazil. Vinicius Jr. Rodrigo. Maybe Bruno Guimaraes. Rafinha. Hmm. Hmm. Apart from that, and then everyone was just waiting for Indrik to come on, right? Funny enough, everyone was just waiting. Like, even the England fans, it got to minute 70, and it was like, like, I'm done with this. Can I just see Indrik, please? Like, and that's Brazil. And then you look at this England team, and you look on paper, and you look at what this, the, the, the talent that's in this team and what England have to offer. And you think, surely there's a chance, playing at Wembley as well, surely England should be taking this game and uh, causing some sort of a threat here. What happened to the days when you looked at Brazil and you felt Brazil? It was Brazil, you know, Dida, Cafu, Roberto Carlos, Lucio, Ziroberto, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Kaká, R9. I mean, pff, you could look at Brazil and just go, I quit, I quit. I'm not even walking onto the pitch. We're not even going to take part. We're not, this match is not taking place. That used to be Brazil, yeah? Unless you were France and Zidane done his magic because he was Zidane. Anyway. <laughs> so you thought England would have a chance, right? England would, would show up and do something. But no. No. Gareth Southgate doesn't allow it. <laughs> doesn't allow it. No, 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 no. Can I just say, right? As a, as a Chelsea fan as well, the cooking that our lads were getting online today... You know, amongst ourselves as Chelsea fans, we can critique, right? We can share amongst each other. It's, uh, I feel like it's, it's healthy to do that, right? It's cool. You, everyone has their opinion. Everyone has where, where, you know, what they're worried about, what they're happy about. And, and we can keep that amongst ourselves, right? It's a very uh, chelsea orientated echo, chem echo chamber. But today, like the whole country are watching and Gallagher and especially Chilwell. Not Gallagher, some. Chilwell... And I'm just here, like, uh, like I can't, I can't even disagree with what I'm seeing. Like today, the criticism for today was spot on, uh, just not good enough. But it doesn't all boil down, boil down to that, because England have a team that should be good enough to take on any country in the world. If the setup. And the team were orientated in a way where they could capitalise on its attacking threat rather than having to just try and contain and not let anything through, which is a weakness that England have, then we wouldn't be in this position. In fact, I think England would be scoring goals and killing games much earlier. England shouldn't be a team that's going in nil-nil at half-time without anything happened. England should be a team that's 2 3 nil up at half-time because they've dominated the attack. Or... Or, if it means that England could get caught out on a counter from time to time, it should be a case where England are 3-2 up, or 2-1 up, or something like that. That should be where England are. We're not. And today was just a clear example. I mean, today was just horrible. Today is clear. Clear as day, but the FA are not going to do this. The FA are not going to flip and bother. Today was an absolute prime and, and, and red flag indicator and signal that Southgate should not be taking this team to the Euros. It's as simple as that. If England want to have a chance at the Euros, don't go with Southgate. Make the change before we fly. Before we fly. Get an England man. 
Jose is sitting right there. Jose is right there. He's just looking and waiting for a job. Do you know what I mean? Not just him. Tuchel won't make it, I doubt. Oh, actually, Tuchel could make it. Tuchel might be available. Tuchel might be available. You know what? This is going to sound mad. Eddie Howe could be available. Hell, even Graham Potter could be <laughs> is available. Listen, and that's saying something. It's gone from a Chelsea fan. That's saying something. Southgate should not be the one to take England to the Euros. If not, there's no point. There's no point. Today illustrated that. Today absolutely illustrated that. And to be fair, Brazil missed... A lot. <laughs> a lot. Prime Brazil would have killed England tonight. Killed. It would have been an assassination. It would have been an execution. It would have been uh, game over. A decapitation, if you want to call it that. But they missed a lot. Until when Brazil made their subs. Well, hey, Hendrix coming on. Lo and behold, he gets his first goal for Brazil against England at Wembley. Beautiful. Just had to be, in it? It just had to be. Albeit it was a tap-in, but it just had to be. Him and Vinicius going in for the action, and it wasn't offside. It was a correct decision. By the way, the referee tonight I thought was actually pretty decent too. So, um... He let the game go for as much as possible. Apparently kicked off at half-time. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank wasn't happy. Big up, Jimmy Floyd. Um, with how much for a friendly, it was getting a little bit crazy. So um, even second half, I thought he was, I thought referee was class. So no complaints there. Um, just England are not playing in a way whatsoever that's going to uh, benefit, you know, or at least, at least at the bare minimum, be able to execute the result that's needed, you know. Do whatever you got to do, you get that result. It just comes in. And England have so much going for them, um, to, at least at least in, 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 a, in an attacking sense, in order to utilise the talent up top. We don't. We just don't. Um, the substitutions, I mean, at one point were just absolutely horrific. Later on, like, um, Mainu came on, and I know people were gassed and people were happy and whatnot. Rashford managed to see some, some of the time of day. Um, but apart from that... Walker's come off injured, so he's going to be, a, a, I think, a doubt for Manchester City going forward. I think he's definitely going to be out for some time. Um, and overall, I mean, he brought on Lewis Dunk. I mean, <laughs> he brought on two defensive players, right? Nil-nil, where England needed to actually try and get something. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Southgate's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> it's, 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 it's bonkers. So, England lose tonight, 1-0. And I'm not even surprised. And everyone fell asleep. And yeah, it's just clear as day. England going to the Euros, good luck. Absolutely good luck. We're not going to be able to do a flipping thing out there um, as long as Southgate is in charge. Simple as that. And by, and by doing a thing, I mean actually going on to win it. England are in a position where we should be winning a tournament. It's as simple as that. There's no excuse. No excuse. If there was an excuse, then you could cut some leeway and go, okay, let's try and make a quarterfinal. Let's try and make a semi... No, no, no. Been there, done that. Listen, we need to win it. That's the standard hell that this... Uh, what should be within this England team now. It should be. The players are there. The tools are there. The resources are there. Just not the right gaffer. So um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on all of that. Um, and we'll see what happens going forward, although we know it's, we know it's not going to happen. We'll go into the Euros and um, nothing will change. So that's that. Let's move to some news happening on the club football front before we wrap up. Um, it was, this was going to be the original video before England played, but I thought I'd wait and see how England-Brazil was going to play out and then um, we go from there. By the way, let me know your thoughts on Endrick. Um, it's funny, from a Chelsea perspective, Chelsea had basically first option to buy this guy. Chelsea was so far ahead. And if Chelsea paid the money, which is what we did anyway for all the other players that have not performed. But if we did actually pay the money, we would have got Endrick through the door. Now, that doesn't mean that we should just go all youth <laughs> like we have done. But if you're going to go youth, get it right. And um, Endrick uh, had definitely, definitely shown that the tar being a target at that level was legit. Chelsea didn't want to do it because Chelsea didn't want to inflate the market. It was 60 million. It was a lot of money for someone his age, for someone who's coming through. It's a lot of money. It's a gamble, right? But I think it's safe to say that people hold him very, very, very high. 
and he has performed when he's called upon and he's already, already a fully fledged Brazil international and he scored his first goal tonight happy days and has vast experience at senior football despite his young age instead Chelsea are going to instead of paying for Endrick and being scared of inflating the market we're now going to go for another young Brazilian who hasn't played a full 90 minutes of senior football yet we're going to pay 40 million euros for him instead that's the plan so great um let's move to i think the biggest story in club football as of the last two days there was no video yesterday because nothing happened nothing happened like literally nothing happened dead day i think safe to say i'm talking on the football front the non-football front loads happened we're not gonna get into that this isn't the right channel <laughs> but you get the gist um chaos absolute chaos on all fronts on the football front nothing so Let's get into what went down, um, as of today, anyway, and um, we'll see what we have to say. Here's the latest on Xabi Alonso. Florian Plattenberg saying, our clear information is that if Xabi Alonso leaves Leverkusen this summer, he will join Bayern Munich and not Liverpool. I wonder if that's actually going to happen. Um, personally, I can see why he could go to either side. He's still young. He has time. You could argue that you could go to the Bundesliga, try and do well there, and then move to the Premier League, and then look at trying to move into Real Madrid or something after Ancelotti's contract is done. Some would say move to the Premier League now. Why wait, you know? And to be fair, I think if he did and he took Liverpool, I think they would still be uh, looked at very, very highly. I think there's a big opportunity there. But he has somewhat conquered German football with by Leverkusen, or he's about to anyway. You put him in a Bayern Munich team, and I think he does the same. So it does build up his CV, reputation, and it is a nice way to be able to build yourself up going down the slow route. It could be the wisest route. Goes to Liverpool, you could ask questions. What if it doesn't work? What if he flops? What if he doesn't, you know? It could easily go downhill because the Premier League is a very volatile league. You have to be at your best if you're going to try and actually compete and be there to win something. So I could understand why he might go to Bayern Munich, but... I don't know why. I just feel like he doesn't go to Liverpool now. He would have to wait a few years, I think, before a Premier League job at the highest level does make itself available. So that's the risk. That's the risk that he would have to take if he does go to Bayern Munich. Let me know what you think. Personally, personally, I think he should bite the bullet and go to Liverpool. I'm just saying that on a personal level. On a professional level, I'm a Chelsea fan. I would rather much he doesn't go to Liverpool and Liverpool are struggling to get a gaffer. That would be great. <laughs> but um, look, yeah, what do you think? Let me know down below. Now, we move a little bit more to the Chelsea front. Latest from Strasbourg. Blow for Strasbourg as they fight to stay up as Angelo Gabriel is potentially out for the rest of the season. He's back at Cobham having treatment for a hernia injury. So there we are. Angelo Gabriel, I think, at Strasbourg is now done. Unless he signed... Did he sign a... Was it a two-year loan deal that he was um, there for? I'm not mistaken. I need to go. I need to go back and check if I'm not mistaken. But he's back at Cobham now, um, so I think that is now done. I think his aim is going to be looking to pre-season at Chelsea and see if he can break through. Who's going to be manager at that point? Pochettino? Someone else? God knows. Personally, I still think it's probably going to be Deserby, but you never know. With Chelsea Football Club, it's very hard to predict. We're more volatile than Bitcoin. So, <laughs> um, apologies. Getting indigestion, it's talking about us. But Angela Gabriel um, is out with a hernia injury and he's back at Cobham. So you won't be seeing him for Strasbourg anytime soon. And Strasbourg in a relegation fight, maybe you could say could use an Angelo Gabriel at least to be available. And they're not going to have that. So it's going to get very, very tough for Strasbourg over in the French League. We'll see what happens. Now, shifting over to the Chelsea women's side, where we are actually doing things somewhat properly. Check this out. Chelsea's talks with Lyon over appointing Sonia Bompasta to replace Emma Hayes are advancing well. And all parties are optimistic and agreement can be reached. That's from Julian Laurent. So, like I've said before, um, she's the best in the game in terms of the women's game. Apart from Emma Hayes. <laughs> Emma Hayes is heading off to become the United States uh, women's national team manager. Fair play to her. Absolute Chelsea legend. Will never be forgotten. But if we are going to replace her, this is the correct person to go for. No complaints there whatsoever. This has been done absolutely perfectly. Amazing how we can do that with the women. Can't do that with the men. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but 
I hope she um, arrives at Chelsea and I hope she takes charge. Her CV at Lyon has been absolutely incredible since she took over at 2021. Um, won everything in France, basically, and has won the Champions League already. Absolutely destroyed everything at such a short time. So big up to um, Sonia Bonpasta and let's see if she arrives and becomes Chelsea women's manager. And I think it would be able to, it'd be the best way to continue what the women are actually doing or have been doing is just winning constant trophies, constant success. She would be the right person to keep that going. So I hope it happens. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, there was an update in terms of the shirt sponsor with Chelsea and as a consequence, Manchester United. Malaysia Airlines is out of the race for Chelsea's jersey. The Malaysian carrier joins Man United's global partners. This collaboration names Malaysia Airlines as the official commercial airline of the club. Competitive Saudi airline Riyadh Air remains in the game. Additionally, talks with Bank of America and an Asian insurance company are ongoing. Man United, how have their official um, commercial airline partner? It, for Chelsea, it was Oman Air, and that disappeared a, a couple of weeks ago. We still need a shirt sponsor because Infinite Athlete are going to be moving to the sleeve as of next season. Who's going to be on the front? Riyadh Air, Bank of America, an Asian insurance company? No idea. But it's got to be done soon because if it's not done soon, the same thing that happened last year is going to happen again. We'll end up launching a brand new kit with no sponsor on it. It would, it would look ridiculous. Like for a second year, it would look a bit dumb. <laughs> it actually would so we have to get this over the line and not look silly the leaks have already come out for the new away kit and what it might look like it's funny when the leaks come out for other teams you can see that there's already a shirt sponsor on there for us there isn't um that we'll see what if that actual away shirt is going to be the one it looks like it might be white and a little bit of blue and it, it just looks very personally i'm not a fan but we'll see what it looks like afterwards um but a shirt sponsor needs to be sorted asap Personally, I think Bank of America might walk in. I just think Bank of America might come in clutch for Bowley and Co., you know, and do some sort of a deal. That's why I think we might be heading. But let me know your thoughts on that. Meanwhile, Malaysia Airlines have headed off to Manchester United. So congrats to them. I think they're going to be pocketing three million a year from that deal because it's just as if the official airline partner. It's not um, the shirt sponsor or anything like that. So there we are. Now... To round up, um, there was a very uh, pleasant event that took place today. Um, and I'm saying this as a Chelsea fan. Um, it took place at Anfield, Liverpool Legends versus Ajax Legends. And why was it pleasant, you might ask? Because Sven Joran Eriksson took charge of the Liverpool team. So special Anfield ovation for Sven um, as he took charge of that Liverpool team. And Liverpool did go on to win... 4-2. Um, Steven Gerrard was there. I saw names in there that I couldn't believe. Um, Gerrard was there. Fernando Torres was there. He's been in the gym. <laughs> you can tell. Um, Torres, Babel, um, Sammy Hippia. I even saw Lippmanen. I've not. When I saw Lippmanen, I'm like, oh my God, I've not said that name in over 20 years. Easily. Easily over 20 years, I've not said that name. Maybe 25 uh, since I've said Lippmanen. Some of you may not know who he is. <laughs> go, go and look him up. Um, but really good game. And look, you know what? Torres was hunting the goal for the entire game. And then in the 84th minute, he got it. Um, and yeah, you can see he's very, very happy there. But it was the most Torres goal you could ask for. Ball comes across and he slides into it. I think it hits him on the bottom of the hamstring. And it bubbles and hits the post and then walks in. And then he goes in with the goal, with, with the ball, and smashes the ball inside the net. Um, just the most Torres goal you could possibly ask for. At least the... Uh, the, the Torres before he retired, um, not the Torres that was at Liverpool prior and just banging goals left, right and centre, not that Torres. But anyway, he got the goal, very happy for him, even though it's Liverpool, but I'm happy for him. Um, and I'm very happy for Sven. I'm mentioning all this because of Sven. It was Sven's wish to take charge of Liverpool in some sort of a capacity and he never could. He's now got terminal cancer. We don't know how long left. Um, it's sad, it's unfortunate. He wanted to fulfill a dream. Liverpool allowed it to happen. Klopp allowed it to happen. And he took charge of this Liverpool team in this Legends game and he's fulfilled a wish. Um, so I'm very happy for Sven. Um, in that regard, I'm very happy he fulfilled his dream. And um, it was done very, very well. Overall, it was done very, very well. So there we are. Let me know your thoughts down below in relation to that. And I wish him all the best going forward and um, his family, of course. It's not an easy situation. It's a horrible situation. Um... 
it's, it's hard it, it, it's, it's difficult to say um, and even put into words but in that situation Sven is probably looking at it as it's, it's now life let's make use of every single minute that I've got and this has been it for sure so in that regard I'm pleased for him um, despite just the really sad situation he's in so um, big up to Sven huge respect um, <laughs> look going, we've, we've come full circle because now talking about England See, when Sven was manager, it's funny because that was meant to be gold, our golden generation. And we never won anything. But it was exciting. Do you know what I mean? It was, wasn't it? it well, you'd look at that England team and you just feel like you can go through brick walls. And um, Sven came in and didn't actually do badly. But we just never could get past the quarterfinal. And how many penalty shootouts we had is just ridiculous. And we lost every single one of them. Um, so... Yeah, in that regard, um, Sven was always someone highly respected. And yeah, it is what it is. This is now a different generation. And this team are different. Back then, it was personality. Back then, it was look at the team sheet. Look at these names. And that wasn't going to automatically just get you success. And I think that was one of the things that held us back. Gerard and Lampard and uh, a few of the others have, have openly come out and explained that. That, yeah, we just didn't bond. Big names, but we didn't bond. Everyone was in their club mode and there was never in a group sort of mode like, let's do this together. This team now that we have is different. This team clicked. There's a chemistry. They're, they've gelled. There is a blend. They are there together. There is a team. But we've got Southgate. So there we are. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And I will be here tomorrow as long as there are things to talk about. <laughs> I will be here. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Much appreciated. And I will catch all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. Have a good one, people. Um, don't forget socials on screen in the description. I'll catch all of you tomorrow. In a bit, people. Have a good one. Take care and peace.